My name is Jeff Trich, and uh, we're glad to have you here today to talk a little bit about what uh, the four of us experienced at the most recent Enterprise Connect conference. With me today uh, on the uh, video is uh, Mike Tierney uh, from the University of Alabama, Dick Cassidy from University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Arthur Brandt from Abilene Christian University. We have John Young doing technical support for us. And my name is Jeff Trich of Vantage Technology Consulting Group. Enterprise Connect is uh, one of the large major trade shows held every year uh, down in uh, the Gaylord Palms Resort in Orlando, Florida. It was held most recently in March uh, 18th to 21st of 2018. And uh, uh, Mike, Dick, Arthur, and I all went there. Um, having come from the Akuta background, the way most of you who are listening are, there was quite a bit of difference between what one normally experienced at, a, at an Akuta conference and at Enterprise Connect. On the other hand, there was a lot of content, a lot of interesting themes, innovations, and announcements that came out of that conference. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about that conference, and we're glad to have you with us. So let's start off, uh, Mike, with, uh, with you. Um, why did you decide to go to Enterprise Connect? Was it your first conference and were there particular, first Enterprise Connect conference, and were there particular things you were looking to get from that conference. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and I appreciate, again, you uh, you and John taking the time out to host this uh, webinar and have this discussion. Um, you know, in terms of why did I decide to attend Enterprise Connect, uh, it is my first Enterprise Connect that I've been to. Um, you know, with uh, the Lackman Akuta conference this year, I really wanted to, you know, get out there and see what other emerging technologies there were um, what's coming down the road? What do I need to really concentrate on my learning uh, and personal development in, for, in terms of you know, how the communications world is growing and adapting? Um, and in terms of specific topics I was looking for, uh, and we can get into some of that a little bit later, um, you know, in addition to industry trends, I really wanted to look at um, what some of the alternatives were for some of our uh, older pieces of technology that we have on campus, uh, some things that we find uh, either hard to maintain or don't offer as many features as we believe to be out there and that our customers are asking for. Uh, so really to, you know, inform myself and my and be able to come back and talk to my team about, you know, what vendors are out there, what technologies out there that we really need to be looking at to provide the best service to our customers. Great. Um, how about you, Dick? Similar kind of uh, approach yeah. and reasoning? Yeah, and John and Jeff, thanks for everything for putting this together. I echo the majority of what Mike said, uh, with the exception of one of the other objectives of, of why I was interested in Enterprise Connect is just the concentration of uh, vendors in one spot for FaceTime and discussion. Pretty much echo the rest of what Mike Okay. Said. Art, uh, anything that you would add? Yeah, so, I mean, probably the biggest driver for me is just that, that uneasiness that I have felt over the last several years of what's next for us when it comes to providing telepathy services for our campus. Um, you know, it's, I, I don't know, it just, one of the drivers for me is that I've, I've heard about different folks that have come to uh, Enterprise Connect over the last couple of years and gotten some, some clarity, if you will, and so I was looking for that clarity. Uh, this is not my first Enterprise Connect conference. In fact, the last time I attended, it was still called VoiceCon uh, because I'm old. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what my kids tell me. And uh, actually, it was the year that they were VoiceCon in Orlando, and then they were Enterprise Connect in uh, San, in San Francisco that, that year, or Enterprise something. I forget if it was Connect or not. Um, but... Um, so my, my main focus was sort of to see who is who was there, what they were offering, and how applicable it would be to me in Abilene, Texas. Okay. 
As each of you wandered around the uh, the trade floor, and uh, for those people who didn't uh, attend, there were probably close to 200 exhibitors there. So it was a large um, trade floor. Some of the uh, exhibitors brought their big booths rather than their little tabletop booths. Uh, and of course, some great sessions and keynotes. Um, what would you pick out as the sort of top three recurring themes uh, that each of you saw as you uh, walked around the exhibit floor and, and talked to other attendees? Mike? I think the three things that jumped out to me that most people seem to be talking about uh, were uh, team collaboration software. I know, you know, there were uh, several keynotes on that topic. Um, there was a lot of discussion on AI and bots and enabling uh, bot integration with techno with communications. Uh, and then the third thing was there was a, a large discussion about voice recognition, including including you know intelligent voice in applications. Um, that those were the three things that I really saw as the as the key points of discussion. Okay, how about you, Dick? Um, I again echo what Mike said. Um, I. I took notice of there were a lot of call center solutions. Um, uh, so if we get to that point, one of the kind of one of the detriments or of a large conference like that is I, um, there were many things that were applicable to higher ed. I think you had to go look for it um, versus what we've all been accommodated when we've gone to a CUDA. There's the table's been kind of preset. So, but. Uh, other than what Mike had mentioned, that there, there were there seemed to be a pretty uh, large uh, concentration of call center solution uh, vendors. And and you, Arthur? No, I, I would agree with Dick. I mean, in fact, I heard somebody as we were walking from one session to another session comment that it felt like this that we were at a call center uh, conference mm -hmm. because there was such a, a, a number of whether it's session topics. And, and I would even say they were connecting, you know, bot and, and uh, artificial intelligence to call center or voice recognition to call center. And as well as, you know, as you, as you walked the, the floor, everybody had a call center. I mean, my, Mike and I walked the floor uh, at least once and we had call center questions. And so it was like that was the bingo card of the day. Uh, let's, let's see how many vendors we can talk to about call center. Um, and... So, so the other thing that, uh, you know, maybe something that I would connect um, was the, the whole conversation about user experience as opposed to UI or uh, customer experience. Uh, and so, that, and I think that ties in with the voice recognition component uh, as, as voice as a UI now, or, or voice as the user experience. And, and so that, that, that seems to be something different than what I traditionally talk to, you know, if, if I'm talking about my telephony offering on campus, I talk about my customers. I don't talk about my users. And so that that's, I think Dick made, made a great point, is that uh, historically at Akuta we've set, we've preset the table. And so this table's not preset. And so it's, uh, one of the challenges has been how do we dig through uh, the, 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 the word bingo of team collab and whatever else to find applicable uh, solutions and technologies or even ideas that we can apply as we, as we head back uh, to our host institutions. Mike, did you have something to add? I was just going to echo um, that I, I believe both Arthur and Dick are, are correct that really the, the fourth thing was contact center. kind of brought everything together, as Arthur said, um, which worked great for me because that was one of the things that I was kind of shopping around was contact center. Um, but it seems to be where, you know, there's not a lot of room for growth in terms of basic telephony. You know, your, your handset's going to be your handset's going to be your handset unless you have a soft phone, then your soft phone's going to be your soft phone. Uh, but where a lot of the vendors seem to be focusing their innovation seem to be in the contact center space. You know, how can we take AI and voice recognition uh, and make a better experience for, as Arthur said, the user is not necessarily what we would call the customers. So. Right, and related to that, I think I would add uh, there was a lot of emphasis on omni-channel and uh, multi-channel communications, not just voice anymore, 
again tied to the contact center. And I also talked to a number of, of people in the booths about analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, seemed to be the other big piece. But again, the common theme was analytics related to the call center, omni-channel related to the call center. And of course, most of this, uh, as, as you see these days, tended to be more in the cloud than premises based. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, Jeff, that there seemed to be a whole, a whole big uh, cloud component and whether that's not even their own cloud as they, um, they're leveraging other people's cloud. So, I mean, there was one vendor, and I forget the name, who, hey, look, we're using AWS. I mean, AWS was a, an exhibitor there. I would have not have thought that. But they're using AWS and, and their hooks, if you will, into uh, to create a, a, a call center platform, uh, which is, again, I think that for, for, from my standpoint, that's different. Uh, I, I hear cloud, but all of a sudden it becomes tangible when you're talking about, can I put a uh, call center in the cloud? And not, not only is it, can it be done, but oh yeah, other people are doing it. So. And it, Jeff, if I, can, if I can jump in on that too, it seemed like sure. The preponderance of them were doing it. You know, there were very few that were advertising as, you know, we are a on-premise, you know, contact center. Uh, I went to the contact center 2.0 uh, session, uh, and there was a lot of discussion about what features and functionality is coming out. And one of the questions was, do you need to go to the cloud to take advantage of new technologies? And you know, they hemmed and hawed a bit, but really boiled down mm -hmm. to, it largely is a prerequisite for a lot of the, you know, the rapid development that they're focusing on. They said, probably not, but it would certainly help. Mm -hmm. Well, let's use that then as a, as a jumping off point to the question that I think all three of you have alluded to, which is of this, of these items we talked about, the collaboration and the call center and the bots and the AI and the analytics and uh, all of the rest of this, how much of it is applicable to higher ed and I guess the other question to my mind is, if it's not applicable now, is it likely to be applicable in the future? Uh, Mike, why don't, uh, Dick, why don't we talk, start with you? Sure. Um, so I guess the way I, I, I looked at uh, this, this conference was um, if you had to put uh, customers or potential customers in buckets, I would say the largest buckets is an enterprise play customer regardless of what vendor you're speaking to on the floor. They're, they're, they're going for scale, large enterprise scale. Um, so in the future, I think as the technology gets cheaper and it works better, you know, in my mind, there really isn't a cloud PSTN solution that scales economically today. But then the applications around the three um, legs of a bar stool, the ACD, the voicemail, and you know the telephony platform. To me, that's that's where I saw the sweet spot for this conference. Um, of those different, you know, PS Alley, some UC. Um, so that's that's kind of where I was coming from. Um, I didn't go I didn't go into the conference uh, expecting any economical, you know, whiz bang news that we can scale. You know, 30, 15 person call centers that are very traditionally found on 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 institutions. Uh, you know, at our institution. So that, that wasn't in my mind okay. a little bit. Yeah. So. Arthur? So I, I definitely think all of these themes are applicable, whether they're applicable today versus applicable, you know, two years, five years down the road. Um, I mean, I, I know that for me, I don't compete with uh, University of Alabama or University of, um, of Nebraska in students or in technologies, uh, we all compete against Amazon or Citibank or you know whatever you know the the, the cable company. <laughs> um, so you know it, it's those folks are already using the technologies, uh, whether that's you know uh, call center technologies or if uh, whether they're using um, you know re, uh, communication platform as a service. Uh, and so I, I think that the mandate for us is, okay, 
if it's coming, then how do we do this, as I think Dick alluded to, how do we do it um, so that it's applicable to our, our, our use cases and it's economically uh, beneficial for us? And so, uh, and, and I think that's, you know, again, that's something that we have to comb through all the marketing speak or whatever to say, all right, can you do it? Here, here's, here's what I'm looking at. Here's, here, here's the, the, what I've got to offer and how does it match with what you have to offer and can you do it at a price point that I can deal with? Michael, what about uh, you? I would agree uh, for the most part with uh, with Art and Dick on this. Um, you know, I think, you know, where there is uh, some growth is going to be down the road a little bit. Um, you know, right now in a perfect world, as I think I said to you before we started, Jeff, I would do all the things that they were talking about, you know, right now. Um, but it's not a perfect world. And, you know, in the pragmatic world that we live in, uh, it's, you know, it's just never going to happen here from a large scale standpoint. You know, one of the things uh, there was a, a keynote about some of the team collaboration apps and they were, you know, discussing various ways that people were using team collab. And, you know, the question came up, you know, in a decentralized environment, either a conglomeration or, you know, someplace where there is no central source, how do you get everybody working together? You know, is there any interoperability between these tools? And the answer was by and large, uh, and in fact, I, I believe it was uh, Cisco who said, no, it, it's just, it's not going to happen there. You, they can't provide the features that they want to provide and provide cross-platform compatibility. Um, you know, in some corporate environments, that's fine. A, you know, a central powerful IT stand steps in and says, we are going to use Spark for our collaboration, or we are going to use Microsoft Teams, or we are going to use um, whatever else is out there. Um, but from a university standpoint, at least from my university standpoint, I don't want to speak for everybody else, you know, we don't have that central strength to say, you know, across all of our organizations, we're going to, we're going to use uh, Cisco Spark because that's what we have an enterprise agreement for. It just doesn't work that way. But I think, you know, paying attention to what is out there now in terms of uh, the team collab, the AI, the, the voice recognition, um, these are things that I think down the road are going to start filtering their way into things that we can deploy more on a small scale and say, you know, we are going to stand up, um, you know, some type of call center for our athletic sales that is going to use voice recognition for people who want to renew their season tickets without having to go whole hog and say, we're rolling voice recognition out across all of our call centers. Yeah, I would say the one other big difference, or actually two other big differences. Number one, the speed of adoption in many cases in higher ed depends on how ready the users are to use it. And I'm not talking about the people calling into, for example, admissions. I'm talking about the admissions group or the athletics group or the facilities group. The second part is that in a commercial enterprise, there is a very real hard dollar return on investment on these kind of features. And they can say, you know, L.L. Bean can tell you to the penny what the average phone call is worth to them. And if they can handle X percent more calls, that translates to X percent more dollars. Uh, and we don't have those hard ROIs uh, in higher ed. Were there any particular um, presentations or events that really stood out to you of the uh, the sessions you attended um, or the events that you attended? Was there something that you said, oh, wow, this this was, this made the whole conference worthwhile? The, uh, one of the things that I like, this is, I didn't mean to jump in here just because sure. I'm up on my stop time here. So, um, I, I, I hope that they sprinkle in some of the more smaller um, breakout sessions rather than the last afternoon of the last day. Because uh, from an intimacy standpoint, I, I thought that would have been, uh, but I'm glad they had some. So that was positive. But um, um, So I, if that's more of a kind of a, uh, a structure part of the conference rather than one particular one. But I, I thought the, the smaller breakout sessions were a little bit more um, productive rather than well, the larger ones had a little bit more one-way communication. And I, I, that's 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 just a byproduct of when you when you have a conference that's that large. 
Yeah. yeah, it's hard to get a lot of interaction with, you know, 5,000 people sitting in a room. Uh, Michael or, uh, or Arthur, anything that particularly stood out to you? Go ahead, Michael. One of the things I wanted to just build on what Dick had just said was um, what I found very valuable was not necessarily actually part of the conference, but when we actually met as a group and had a, a side discussion, you know, and, and we met sort of as ACUDA alumni and at, at the event you had put together. And then um, I know, you know, we talked a lot afterwards at, uh, at receptions and stuff like that. So I think, you know, in terms of the conference putting it together, it wasn't there in, you know, that small group collaboration. Uh, but, you know, I think we were able to make it work. Uh, and I found that very valuable. Um, in terms of particular presentations that stood out to me, I, I, I found the Amazon uh, AWS keynote interesting. Um, you know, they were pushing Alexa in the enterprise. And, you know, all I could sit there is think, you know, I, I read a lot of, you know, technology news and people don't trust Alexa in their living room and now they want to put it in the boardroom. So I found that, <laughs> you know, kind of a, uh, a lack of awareness of where people are in, in terms of it, or, or maybe I just read into, um, you know, a different niche of the market than, than Amazon's really targeting. Um, and then, you know, the other kind of the presentation I alluded to earlier, the, the contact center 2.0, I found um, very valuable in terms of, you know, what are people working on? Not even what's currently available, but what are the directions that people are working on in terms of uh, adding new features in the future? Arthur? Um, so I, two comments. Um, well, what is funny is the, uh, to, to Mike's paranoia about Alexa in the, uh, in the telephony space, there's actually a telephony provider that has Alexa integration already. It's a recipe, and they offer a button that they can put on their phone, uh, which I only found out about like a week ago, uh, which I found fascinating because you know I think Alexa integration, it, it, again, the voice UI, the voice UI aspect is going to be fascinating as it comes down, both as it as it intersects with. Um, you know, what, what we've re referred to as IVR for years, but also as it then, you know, crosses and goes more into just general, uh, you know, user interfaces. Um, the other thing that, that, that I found intriguing was the conversation about uh, um, Microsoft Teams. Um, you know, they, it was their one year anniversary, uh, but they kept saying, oh yeah, Teams is not a replacement for Skype for Business. In fact, you know, if you throw the roadmap up there, Skype for Business has another server that's going to come out, and you know, but they're, they're not planning on a one-for-one -one replacement of the services or offering uh, with Teams. And I thought that was interesting because it doesn't. Again, I thought we were going to talk convergence between collab and and telephony services, if you will, and and Teams, but apparently no, the, the, those those don't intersect yet. And and. Cisco's sort of following the same, you know, trajectory where they're, you know, when Spark first came out, it seemed like, all right, this is going to be the Jabber replacement. But no, I mean, they're, they're coming out now with multi-line Jabber and all these things that, you know, Spark doesn't do. So it, it seems, at least from the consumer standpoint, like this was going to be an opportunity for convergence. Um, but it really, it seems from the vendor standpoint that that's not happening. Okay, well, this has been a, a great conversation. And then in wrapping up, let me just ask each of you, uh, in addition to any sort of closing thoughts and comments, would you, A, would you, uh, are you planning to attend Enterprise Connect again? And B, would you recommend Enterprise Connect to your former Akuta colleagues? And uh, Dick, let's start with you. Um, yeah. I would. I intend to go next year. Uh, if there's a uh, a smaller type of setting conference uh, I'm, uh, that I feel would be beneficial, I'd, I would also look at that. But yeah, I, I I would intend on going to Enterprise Connect next year, doing a little more pre homework, to possibly set up some vendor, just a few vendor meetings because I know those are always changed on the fly, um, and understand a little bit more due diligence of specific vendors that are going to be there, and then. Uh, Mike touched on it with trying to get together at least an afternoon touch point with a group like like all of us on the phone on a, on the call today to get together um, with more of a little bit more of a focused discussion. So, thank you. And and would you recommend it to um, 
to other former Akuta people? Yeah, yeah, I would. I, th I think there's there's more advantage to scale in the vendor count, and then these types of one-off discussions or networking that are then rather detrimental than not to go. That's just my two cents. So the concentration there is a benefit of. I mean, it's it was pretty intimidating to be quite honestly, but um, from a from a productive standpoint. But yeah, I would say yes. Okay, and Mike, uh, I would really say pretty much the exact same thing Dick said. I'm not sure. You know, Akuda was my every year conference. Enterprise Connect might be a, you know, every other year kind of deal. Um, a, a, with the caveat that if we did start to build up more of a uh, sort of higher ed focus or, you know, interest group that was a that was interested in attending contact uh, contact center Enterprise Connect routinely, uh, then it would definitely be a an annual thing for me. Right. And Arthur, we'll end with you. Uh, I, you know, I, I won't disagree with my colleagues. Um, yes, I, I would recommend this to to, um, to folks in higher education. I would recommend it to anybody who's who's wanting to get a sort of a, an in-depth insight, if you will, to the telepathy platforms across industries. I, again, I think Dick's absolutely right. You have to do your homework before you show up. Uh, you need to understand. You know, who do you want to see? Who, who, what do you want to know more about? Uh, come with maybe a plan. Uh, I, I would make that recommendation no matter where you go, especially if you go to something big, whether it's interop, whether it's educause, whether that you know, even if you're going to uh, what, what the the Akuta annual, I'd say go ahead, go go into it with a plan of, of sort of what what are three things you're looking for, or or somebody you want to go and actually interact with and take those opportunities to interact. I, I know we had a conversation with a guy who works for one of the Koch brothers um, uh, at, at the at the final dinner on, uh, I forget which night it was, but you know, it was just, you know what? His, his industry is different than higher ed, but his challenges are very similar to ours. His uh, budget uh, challenges are similar to some of the budget challenges that we face. And so, you know what? It, 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 it may be different industry to industry, but you know what? The challenges sort of morph uh, and, and transverse those industries sometimes. And so, you know what? Take, take opportunities to, to, to interact and learn. Uh, so again, I think from Mike's perspective, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going next year for Enterprise Connect. Again, I'd like Dick, I'm going to look at the spectrum and say, is there something else that, that may be more beneficial for me at, this, at that time? Uh, but I would definitely recommend, and I definitely could see this maybe once every two years, maybe once every three years. Okay. Well, I think this has been a great session. One of the things I would encourage to everybody who's listening to this is as you decide what conferences you're going to, make sure you continue to communicate them to your ACUDA colleagues so that we can continue to look for opportunities to get together. Um, there's a group of us that uh, continue working with EDUCAUSE, trying to find uh, uh, maybe a, a home uh, within the uh, EDUCAUSE uh, ecosystem. Uh, there may very well be a pre-conference gathering as uh, before the annual at uh, in Denver for Educause that we're working on, and we're going to continue to look for other ways to uh, to continue to get together. Just to be perfectly honest, uh, I think like a lot of you, I miss you guys. So with that, let me say thank you to uh, Mike Tierney, to uh, Dick Cassidy, to Arthur Brandt. Uh, and to John Young for the technical support on this. And uh, on, uh, from, from all of us, thank you very much for joining us. And we hope this was helpful. And we encourage any feedback to any one of us. Thanks very Have much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you.